I'm Sabine Arthur Prigione. I'm a professor of sex and gender sensitive medicine at Radboud University in the Netherlands, in Nijmegen, and at Bielefeld University in Germany. In the last 10 years, we have definitely seen an advance in the integration of the gender dimension in science, which is probably a combination between more knowledge arising and hence also uh, an effect that more researchers get into it, but also, of course, the consequences of funding agencies requiring more focus on sex and gender and also journals requiring more focus on sex and gender. So although we are not there fully and this is not normal for everybody yet, but we're still getting to a point where more and more researchers are incorporating it and hence we're also seeing an uptick in the knowledge that is being produced and in the integration in practice hopefully also to follow. Now when we think about the gender dimension from a Horizon Europe perspective, there's actually three layers that are addressed. And one is the gender representation in teams. The second one is the gender representation in decision-making processes. And the third one is the integration of sex and gender in content, so in the work that we're doing. And while I would say we're definitely seeing a progress in the incorporation of sex and gender in the work that we're doing, we're also seeing definitely more representation in the teams in general. I think the part of the dimension where we mostly need to still work on is the representation in power dynamics. So are we seeing gender equality in leadership in scientific teams? I would say this is probably the one that still needs most work and where we still need to see most progress. For a research institute to systematically integrate that, it really means that it needs to be incorporated in all processes at all levels. So that means that all the supporting facilities can play a role here, from a grant uh, office to um, all kinds of facilities to ethics commissions we're working with, to all kinds of processes we go to, be it training for, for example, students or for staff. So all of these layers can incorporate sex and attention to sex and gender and require it. And then of course, what also needs to happen is for the researchers themselves to embrace it and bring it into their practice. So it is really a combination between a top-down offer, which has to be led from the top, and a bottom-up request, which then is incorporated in our practices.